Welcome back to the channel. I am out here at Pensacola Beach today, and I have a feeling that they're gonna be munching. We've had flat water for like two or three days now, and we've had some south winds pick up. And as you can see, the surf has picked up. It's like about two foot, maybe three foot, some good current out there. And I think it's gonna get the fish stirred up. So hopefully we get on some pompano. Just got a sandbar here, and I'm gonna stagger my baits past the sandbar today. A lot of reports of pompano being caught far still. Let's go get some sand, please. Blind scoop a few times. Look at that, look at that. Blind scooping, look at that pile. That's enough for a minute. It'll get me started at least. And I'll be using an assortment of fish bites today. I go ahead and just cut them all up, put them in one of my old fish bites bags. And that way I've got all the flavors I'm gonna use ready to go. And it is definitely a Sputnik kind of day. So I have got me some sinker guy Sputniks. And then on this rod, I'm using a single drop. It's got no bead, no float, live sand fleet. I'm gonna put on a really small sliver of sand flea fish bite to give it some color. Just like that, it looks like eggs, gets their attention. And I'm gonna cast this one out right past these breaking waves so it's hugging the bar. It's not too far. I don't know, maybe 50 yards or so at this spot. And I actually have two types of shrimp today. I've got some stuff from Joe Patty's. This is the stuff you eat, you know, it's good stuff. If you haven't been to Joe Patty's and you're in the Pensacola area, definitely hit them up. It's the best seafood market around. And then I've got some fresh dead frozen from Half Fish. Now this rig, the bottom dropper just has a bead on it. It's the standard pompano rig. I hand tied myself. I'm gonna put a piece of shrimp and a green shrimp fish bite. And then on the top, I do have a float. It's a pink and white float. Put a small piece of that fresh dead shrimp from half hitch and a pink shrimp fish bite. And I'm gonna throw this rod a little further from the sandbar than it did the last one. Maybe like 10, 20 yards past it. Gonna do another live flea, sand flea fish bite. I'm gonna throw this one out further into that dark, deep water out there. Get it out in that trough. Just cover all my zones here. Try to figure out where the pompano are cruising. They have been out far. A lot of reports recently. Uh, some close, I mean, it's all over. There's no telling where they're at. You just kind of have to mix it up. I think this one's got a fish on it. That line's slack. I can't tell. Something had to have touched it. Yeah, there he is. There's a fish there. Nice. I just looked up and it's blowing in the wind. He, he like ran all the way to shore too. I think he's at the bar now. got to be a pomp the way it ran so far in like that yeah little guy might be a keeper I ended up putting a piece of shrimp on here a Joe Patty shrimp with the orange sample fish bite that's what he went for nice little 12 inch pomp there this guy's like all white it's a pretty fish found out where they're at cast it out a little further out in that trough out there let's see if we can find some more just cast it, they got a bunch of birds right here. They're just kind of hanging out though. But always keep an eye out for the birds out there. You start seeing some birds diving on some stuff or going crazy and the water, you know, is blowing up. Get a lure, throw it. There's gonna be fish there. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah, he's running in fast too. Come on, Papa No. It was definitely feeling pompy today. Got the surf up, wind's going. Nice, clear, milky water. That's what this guy feels like, a little pomp. Two of them. Two baby pomp. Nice, little school come through. Doubled up, look at that, a couple babies. That's good though, that means the schools are running through. This guy went for that was a pink shrimp fish bite. This had a green one on the bottom. He already fell off. We'll get these guys back though. They'll grow up. We'll catch them again in the fall. And I did have some shrimp on it. 
The top was tipped with shrimp with the pink. And the bottom I had switched out for a sand flea. So I'm gonna put another sand flea on there with the green shrimp fish bite. And just put this back out there. I, I pretty much casted it max cast on my nine foot rod. So it's it was probably like, I don't know, about 20 yards past the bar. Hopefully a, a school of bigger pompano run through. That'd be pretty sweet. It's good to see the babies though. It's Man. nice here in Florida. Yeah, the like, there, we there we go, there we go. <laughs> that was a nice hit right there. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a good pump, what that is. Nice, good head shakes. Yeah, he's, he's spicy. He's taking me for a ride. Oh, he jumped, he's jumping. Jumping. Come on, be that be that stud pop I need for the tournament. I'm crossed up. No, it's crossed up. Let's get him out of the water. There we go. Nice. That's a good one. Oh yeah. He's a keeper for sure. Nice. Uh, that's a good fit. Yeah, he's gonna be dinner tonight. Nice pop right there. That dude hammered that rod. I just immediately saw it. Went for the shrimp with the pink shrimp fish bite on there nice solid pump he's probably about 13 14 inches we're gonna get him in a cooler we're gonna enjoy this guy for dinner and i caught that fish just behind the sandbar here just uh, about 10 20 yards behind it if you've got some flat days and you notice there's gonna be some south southeast even southwest winds coming up go out there that day because there's a very good chance the pompano are gonna be biting the surf's gonna pick back up for them. It gets them excited. There's more bait in the water. They feel safer from predators because there's some wash to hide in. I'm gonna bring those pompano home and do a catch and cook. It's been a while since I've done a catch and cook and I figured it'd be a good time to do one since the pompano fishing's about to be on fire again. And when I'm done for the day, the way I keep my single dropper hook from just flopping all over the place is I take the sinker in the snap swivel and I go through this guide right here, the top guide, and then I take my hook and go through that snap swivel and then tighten it down. And that way, when you're done, you know, it's, it's sitting there, it's tight. That hook's not just dangling all over the place. And then on the pompano rigs, what you can do is just take the two hooks and hook them together and then take your snap swivel and put it on your guide and just reel it in. And then your hooks stick together and they're not just dangling all over the place. It's just easier to manage. My awesome wife is gonna cook us a pompano dinner, but she's gonna do it Korean style. We can't wait for dinner. It's pompano! Korean style. Bye. <laughs> she's so funny. Okay, so let's make some Korean braised pompano. We've got about a teaspoon of sesame oil, four to five tablespoons of soy sauce, you can do about a quarter cup. This is optional, it's Korean chili pepper flakes. Three cloves of garlic with about a teaspoon of ground ginger. A cup and a half of water and gochugan, which is a hot pepper paste. So you'll use about a big dollop. And of course, the pompano just in cut. We'll get it started in the frying pan. We're gonna have it boil. So let's do medium high heat. Just add your ingredients. Here's the water. Soy sauce. Gochugan. Garlic and ginger. And you just wanna mix that paste until it kinda melts into the sauce. It is a little spicy, you know, just spice it to your desired heat level. And that's why this is optional, but we like it spicy. Yeah, we don't mess around over here. So once you've got that pretty well blended, you're going to add Korean radish. It's also called mu, M-U. If you can't find this at your local Asian market, you can go to Publix and buy daikon radish. It's very similar. We're going to get this to boil and cook down the radish until it softens and the sauce reduces. 
About 10 minutes. What you doing, Alyssa? Setting up the table. Setting up the table. Oh, you're doing a great job, too. So, Katie is super shy. I mean, I get it. When I first started doing this, I was terribly shy, too. It's something about... Something about talking to a camera, it, it's a little awkward. If you haven't done it, give it a try and you'll understand what I'm talking about. So, sorry for her monotone talking. My wife's actually pretty bubbly. Okay. Okay, that's it? That's all you, come on. By the end of this video, she's gonna open up because she's so nervous. She's over here drinking some tequila. <laughs> there she is, see, there it is. <laughs> okay, so it's been boiling for about 10 minutes now. You want your radish to be pork tender, where it's easy to just stick a fork right through. Would you say like kind of like a potato? Yes, very similar to a potato. Now add about half a white onion. And we're just going to cook this down about three to four minutes before we add the fish. All right, so the onions have already cooked down for about three to four minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and add the fish right on top. Just place it right on top of the sauce and the radish. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna spoon the juices right on top. We're gonna cook it about four to five minutes each side. While it's cooking for 45 minutes, just go ahead and keep spooning the juices on top. Okay, it's been about four to five minutes on one side, so we're gonna go ahead and flip. Once you have it flipped, go ahead and start pouring the juices on top as well. We're gonna do another four to five minutes on this side, or until the fish is completely cooked through. So now that it's flipped over, I'm gonna try to go ahead and remove the skin. Yeah, we don't, we don't really like the pompano skin, so we always take it off. And as you can see, it comes off really easy after it's been cooked a little bit. But when you're filleting the fish, it's really hard to get the skin off successfully when filleting pompano. So now that we've got the skin off, let's go ahead and put the sauce over it. The sauce at this point really reduced down, so it's gotten really thick. And it started burning a little bit. When that happens, just go ahead and lower your heat. She lowered it down to a medium heat, and that way you don't burn your sauce. So just something to look out for when you get to this point where it's reduced to a really thick sauce. Okay, it's been a few minutes on this side. I'm just gonna go ahead and go into the center of the fish. It's nice and flaky, so I think it's cooked all the way through. Now that we know the fish is cooked, go ahead and garnish it with your green onions. Adds a little bit of favor flavor and some color. Man, that looks awesome. If only you could smell this, this dish is amazing. Definitely got to give it a try. It's one of my favorite ways that she cooks fish. Then you just scoop it up into a bowl. We got some rice ready. We'll put some rice on it. Okay, there you have it. That's Korean braised pompano. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> look, look how fancy my wife puts rice in a bowl. It's, it's, I, I couldn't do that if I tried. And for the kids, I actually baked theirs uh, the Korean style is pretty spicy the way we make it and they don't want all that spice. We made ours a little extra spicy because me and Katie, that's how we like it. We like it hot. How are you girls liking that pompano? It's great. It's great? It's good. Yeah. Like Alyssa, my youngest over here, she loves pompano. I love it too. Why well, just eat slow? You just eat slow, yeah? I eat all of it. Me too. Oh, sometimes. Just last week, Alyssa was actually asking, when, when are we gonna eat some more fish, Daddy? How come you haven't been catching any fish? Well, it's been slow out there. It is so good. It's so good? It's a little bit spicy. Yeah, just like you. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna give it a try. This is, I actually have never had pompano this way. She's cooked a lot of other fish this way, and it's probably my favorite way to eat some fish. So, give it a try. Oh, yeah. That's the way to do it, babe. Good, I'm glad you like it. That is good. A little spicy. Yeah, I told you guys. That's awesome. You gotta try this recipe, I'm serious. It's probably one of the best ways I've ever eaten pompano. It's really good. It's really good? Mm -hmm. Chaggy wants some too. That's our little beach dog right there. He, he likes pompano too. You want a piece? Give him a little piece, Ellie. I can give him one. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, he likes Pompano. Yay. It's protein and good for him. Yep. If you're interested on in how I bake that pompano, be sure to check this video out right here. And if you've never filleted a pompano before, I got a fillet video over here as well. Until next time, take care and tie lines.